Welcome back to the Niagara Learning Channel. I'm working on a Mac 36 NL uh, RS uh, controller which has got two COM ports. I've put the I.O. on here and what I'm going to show you is how to add a discrete totalizer. I'm not going to add it to the I.O. If you see what I've done here, I've gone from the digital input one on the ISMA IO device, i.e. that's the built-in universal, or well built-in digital input there, these are the universal inputs, they're the digital outputs and they're the analog outputs. And I've gone straight to my logic sheet, which is here. Same view. And I've put an alarm on any point that is out of tolerance so if we look at the universal input which is normally going to be a temperature sensor I put an outer range alarm in here low and high limit and I've done plus 100 minus 30 with a one degree dead band you can change these settings naturally to what you want but I know that uh, we wouldn't go to minus 30 say on an outside air temperature and we wouldn't go above 100 degrees so on UI4 I've just installed a 10k 3A1 sensor so it's just showing that my room temperature currently is 23.4 here and uh, it's not in alarm it's been in alarm that's what you got the unac for but it's now no longer in alarm hence when you view it you don't see any red anyway back to what the video is about so we're going to add into this do one a um, discrete totalizer so if i go into do one on here and I've got a boolean change of value history so if I go into my kit control palette so how you find that if you just go kit and double click control kit control and I'm going to take that discrete totalizer and I'm going to move it across to D01 so that discrete totalizer is in there now but what I want to do is I want to um, expose them points out to the wire sheet so we can see what's going on so if I go back into views wire sheet right click that composite expand do one expand this street totalizer and then these are the pins that I can bring out well all I'm going to bring out is a change of state count so I know how many times it's changed state and I'm going to bring out the elapsed time active I can bring it out this version or this version let's bring out both of them and I'm also gonna bring out resets if we need to do a reset in future so there you have it so let's um, activate that so our outputs come on, change of state count is 1 and it's now timing how long that's been activated and let's turn it off so there's your second state to come on that you've turned off and that's now stopped timing so 11.230 uh, seconds if I um, switch it back on again start into time again and then switch it back off you can also change it where we've got the I don't want that I want to go into there where we've got that there change the state count transition you've got two active two inactive or both so you, you can set it so that okay I just want it to uh, to give me a change of state when it's active and that's it or you can just still use both and then divide it by two if you want to so you know how many times it's been on and off default is both so you can see there's four four change of states there 
Now we'll do the same. Let's go save that. We'll do exactly the same to a digital input. So we'll go there, discrete totalizer, drop it into there, and then just composite again, discrete totalizer, and then we go with change of state count and elapsed time active that and let's bring the resets across so it's exactly the same but this is on an input actions emergency active so we've got a change of state count one so this input's been on for 1.05 seconds it will um, carry on so if I stop it uh, 11 there it's just gone to 11 inactive so that's my two states and that's the time and you can use this if you wanted to the, the, the time you can you can take it from your uh, into your logic that's going to be in milliseconds and so if you're going to go to a numeric writable I would use the millisecond one into the numeric writable and if let's just duplicate that just to show you why I would use that go into that one there basically it's showing it, it's showing the same there but it's the same value it's still in milliseconds but I always just use a milliseconds one that's just giving you information of real in seconds minutes seconds hours it's been on but I would use the milliseconds one and then I'll convert that into seconds, minutes, whatever I want, two hours. You could basically um, write some logic so that you can say that when it's been on for uh, 30,000 hours or 3,000 hours, you then um, change over the pump or whatever you want to. And you can do this exactly the same with the outputs. Um, I think that's it. Thank you for watching.